Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 21st, 2025. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do. Giving you your space weather update, earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Starting out here looking at our sun as we have a very large eruption on the back side of our sun, and as well, we have big plasma filaments that are Earth facing right now. We're going to be keeping an eye on over the next couple days. This is showing the last three hours of activity. Looking here at the incoming activity, cresting into view, plasma filament on the left, and as well on the top, which is the right hand side, and a big sunspot turning into view. But most of the action has been from that sunspot region that just produced all the M class solar flares, as you can see. Left-hand side outgoing, big eruption after a large solar flare or coronal mass ejection from a plasma filament. Having a look now at 193 angstroms, big coronal hole, and you can see the heliosphere affected by this big massive eruption on the backside of the sun, most likely from the sunspot region that produced all the M-class solar flares. So very active backside, all of a sudden gone quiet, earth side, still affected by the coronal hole wind stream, and will be for the next 24 hours. Here's another way to see our sun today, brought to you by GOES-19 Satellite, mixed here with daily events worldwide, and thank you so much for blessing play. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, information shared, staying aware and prepared with daily events worldwide. Here are the sunspot regions to watch. And here are all the Earth-facing sunspots right now, as we have 10 of them. Equatorial, and a couple in the southern region. Current space weather conditions, there are none to talk about. And solar winds are coming in at 467 kilometers per second, keeping us at a KP2 to KP3 level. As you can see, solar X-ray flux not showing much activity at all. We're down into a B range while the, with all these Earth-facing sunspots. Here's the most recent space weather spiral showing coronal mass ejections headed towards Earth, solar storms, minor geomagnetic instability expected, 25th into the 26th. Here's a look at the aurora forecast for North America, as it won't be very strong tonight, but stay tuned. As you know, things can change quickly. Here is a look at our sun, showing Lasco 3, all the cosmic energies leaving our sun the past two days. Watch for this big eruption today. Boom, right there. Coming from the northeast region of our sun, backside. There was a straight north polar eruption there, and then a huge coronal mass ejection. Look at this thing. Unbelievable. That is a massive solar storm. We're most likely going to get whacked by that thing. So stay tuned. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as we're still seeing a lot of deep activity. Another one here through the Banda Sea. Earthquake numbers are back to normal levels, but increased activity through Kamchatka, Eastern Russia, and as well Afghanistan. Notable 240 kilometer depth earthquake there. And rare earthquake here, 4.5 in Poland. Just yesterday, we had a rare one in Scotland. Looking at South America, 5.2 earthquake there, South Sandwich Islands. Drake's Passage still seeing some minor seismicity. And a Caribbean plate seeing a lot of activity recently. But I do believe North American plate is going to be the hot spot over this next little while. USGS reporting 219 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Yesterday, it was at 150. That's really low. These are the more average numbers. Having a look across North America, just the west side, 140 earthquakes through California out of the 219 around the world. Increased seismicity through the Gulf of California up to the Salton Sea, even Los Angeles, and San Francisco Bay. Look at all these minor earthquakes all around the bay, and earthquake swarm at the geysers, seeing about 50 earthquakes out of all of the 220, 50 of them here at the geysers. As well, notable seismicity 
up at Yellowstone National Park, Mammoth, Wyoming. Minor seismicity at best, but notable, and as well notable across the West Coast, up into the Cascades, increased seismicity. It's been way too quiet at the one Fuca Plate. And as well, Alaska has been very quiet, but that's starting to pick up over the past three days. And as well, we're watching Hawaii. We saw a very large eruption just the other day. So east side, northeast region of the Ring of Fire is on a big time watch right now. Earthquake warning is in effect. Now let's have a look at the last seven days for shakers and movers around the world. Talk about deep earthquakes, all the elevated rings showing the depth of the earthquake. Largest, deepest earthquake this week. Largest was the six or 5.8 Philippines. Deepest was a 570 kilometer depth in Fiji. Notable regions here we're zooming in on, especially across the Pacific plate. Drake's Passage, Central America, way too quiet. Heads up, stay safe, aware and prepared. Now let's have a look at the sulfur dioxide emissions forecast brought to you by the active and erupting volcanoes, Alaska, Hawaii, Central America, up into Mexico, and as well, Eastern Russia, Kamchatka, down through Japan with the volcanic islands through the Izu Islands, overlooking Africa, Indonesia, large plume coming out of Central African region. Don't normally see a big plume like that unless there's an eruption. So a possible eruption at one of the active and erupting volcanoes through the northeast region of Africa. And as well, looking at the southern hemisphere, there is still something erupting in the southern hemisphere. I know there is one volcano that is active, Mount Erubus, but definitely seeing some increased sulfur emissions still all around the southern hemisphere. Now let's have a look at world weather brought to you by windy.com, pointing out all the major systems that will be affecting our world over the next 10 days. As we do have a possible hurricane here affecting the Caribbean, but most likely will be ushered into the central Atlantic and then eastward towards Europe. But watching in the long range forecast, you're going to see a lot of snow start to pile up through the Rockies and parts of and most of Canada as the temperatures will be dropping over the next five days. The cold fronts have already moved across North America, bringing severe weather and strong winds with it. Having a look now at possible cyclones affecting northern Madagascar and as well eastern shoreline of Africa in the long range and as well India here. You can see a cyclone on each side of the country heading up into the Mongolian mountains and the Tibetan plateau. Watch for the long range. Going to see some very extremely cold temperatures across eastern China and Russia the long range forecast so stay tuned winter is right around the fork right around the corner and in the forecast overlooking australia and southeast asia uh, australian con continent mostly the southern parts are getting affected by strong systems otherwise you're not going to see much rain in the north until the long range forecast things are about to flip showing the southern polar vortex last night and as well the northern as that is shifting quickly watching all these major systems ramp up gain speed and dump a ton of moisture here is your snowfall forecast for the next 10 days reds and pinks upwards of 100 centimeters of snow but notable there across eastern united states and as well all through the rockies up into alaska Snow is forecast and on the way, even through parts of the Sierra Nevada, California. But on the other side of the world, we're also watching it pile up in more southern regions, parts of Europe and Turkey in the long range. It's going to be a very interesting winter 2025. Let's have a look now at the polar vortex in the northern hemisphere. This is sh depicting our polar vortex and where our North Pole is. But we do have a magnetic north from our planet. We also have a North Pole from our magnetosphere. 
and it changes with our tilt and with seasons. But we're seeing some very dramatic shifts in the structure and the strength of these vortexes each and every season. And with the lower solar activity that we're going to see over the next five years, that is a lot less heat induction that we're going to see. We're going to see a very cooled and cooler planet. Much love, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. Stay safe and healthy, aware and prepared. Thank you.